Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to our Emmy Contender series. My name is Yvonne Villarreal and I cover television. We're here today with Lolly Adafope, who co-stars in Hulu's Shrill. She plays Fran, the BFF, who will tell you what you need to hear, <laughs> not what you want to hear. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. So, had you read Lindy West's book prior? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, and I loved it. And I'd read, I was like aware of her as a journalist, and I'd read her articles uh -huh. and knew that she was great. And so I was very excited to do the show. So what, I mean, what excited you about Fran and maybe sort of the possibilities of what you could do with this BFF character that can sometimes be a little stereotypical, particularly yeah. when it's played by women of color? Mm -hmm. um, I think, because when it was first sent to me, it was an African-American character. Uh -huh. And so I suggested that I send a tape in that was a British version, just because I think that in itself already takes it kind of mm -hmm. quite far away from that stereotype. Mm -hmm. It's normally like an American, yeah. African-American um, sassy black friend, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried to make it as close to myself as possible um, because I don't think I'm that stereotype. Uh -huh. And also just to keep it like as realistic as possible, and as naturalistic as possible. Um, and just make it like a very real portrayal of what um, that best friend can be. Because mm -hmm. there are like good things to be yeah. a sassy black friend, <laughs> as well as the like bad stereotype about it. <laughs> What, it, what excited you or what struck you about this character? Um, I think I was excited because she is, it's like it's always fun to play someone who is similar to you but has like traits that you admire as well. So she's very confident and she's very assertive. Um, so it's like, yeah, quite empowering to be, to pretend to be as confident as she is, uh -huh. even though if I met her, I'd be very intimidated by her <laughs> um, and too scared to say anything to her. <laughs> You'd be too scared to say anything. I think so. If I saw her, I'd probably be like, she's too cool. I can't talk to her. <laughs> um, how about this show? I mean, I think what I've heard a lot from people or reading Twitter comments mm -hmm. is a lot of, where has this show been all my life? Yeah. What, yeah. Would, what, what would be different about my outlook on life if I had this show sooner? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also it's just kind of like, why did it take so long for this show mm -hmm. to get made, I guess? Um, not obviously blaming the people who made the show, yeah. but um, <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, guys, hurry up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like it's it just seems like so obvious that this show should be on TV, mm -hmm. and yeah, a shame that it is has taken a while, and almost a shame that it's like the only show of its kind I think that I've seen anyway that deals with um, issues of like body image and um, fat phobia and everything in a way that isn't completely depressing and. Mm -hmm isn't completely focusing on wanting to change your body and wanting to fit into um, how the world thinks that you should be. Um, so hopefully it's like the first of many and we'll just inspire like lots more shows that tackle subjects that we don't always see on TV. Were you sort of surprised by it when it first, when you first heard about it? Were you like, is this real? Um, what is this going to be? <laughs> I Am think, I dreaming? I think I was, I was like very excited, but also it just kind of made perfect sense. It was like, mm -hmm. Obviously, this book should be a TV show, and to me, obviously, AD should be this person as well. <laughs> yeah. um, and it just seemed like the perfect team to make it into the best show that it could be. So, what do you, what are the traits that you wish you had of Fran? Um, and what could she take away from you that maybe? <laughs> <laughs> um, she, her wardrobe. Her wardrobe. Um, her her sort of like attitude which is I don't care about anyone apart from mm -hmm. like my own self-belief um, which I think I have a bit of but we could all have more, more of yeah um, and then she could probably take from me like being quiet sometimes <laughs> when she doesn't need to um, always answer back maybe uh -huh. um, and also treating women better <laughs> because women already have a tough time in the world right um, so she doesn't really need to add to that by like playing two women off against each other and calling them like it and <laughs> the, the other one. What, I mean, people are talking about the fashion on this show. Did mm -hmm. you have a favorite look of Fran's? Um, I think her pool party look I liked a lot mm -hmm. and uh, her red jumpsuit as well, which now feels like it's like cosplaying us, <laughs> Jordan Peele. Because um, I, I did a gig the other day and I wore it. People were like, oh, I thought you were going to do like a parody. And I was like, no, I just, <laughs> I just really like the jumpsuit. Um, so maybe I can't wear that That's anymore. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very trendy jumpsuit. So I can imagine he probably saw Shrill and then came up with the idea <laughs> first and wrote it really quickly. <laughs> 
Well, something that's so crucial to this show is the friendship chemistry. Mm -hmm. Like, we so often get caught up in like the love, the romantic part, and like yeah. have rooting for somebody. Mm -hmm. But the friendship between Annie and Fran is just so authentic, yeah. and it reminds a lot of people about their own friendships. Mm -hmm. Talk about how, like, what the conversations were like with you and AD about developing that, and like how you fostered that off screen. Um, I think so. I did a chemistry read before I got the part. Um, I guess to basically make sure that yeah. that chemistry was there and make sure that the friendship did seem authentic. Um, and like in the first few days when we were filming, we were we would kind of say like, how awkward would this be if? <laughs> we didn't get on like even if you can act that well it would yeah. still just be quite uncomfortable to just yes. sort of like sit in between scenes and just like not have anything to say to each other um especially but, when you have lines like raw dogging and yeah yeah like exactly like, yeah. yeah you have to have yeah, yeah. And like fake laughing with yeah. people that you that yeah. you don't get on with um but i think we were just like we were just very lucky um we just got on very well and like have a lot of things in common um both comedians both um love each other um, I think yeah we just we're just very lucky that we had a lot of natural chemistry straight away that we could just harness um, what did you guys do offset um what we were the hangouts sushi. um we went uh shopping we went um to a bar and we there was no one in the bar and so we asked if we could play Ariana Grande and they let us play Ariana Grande <laughs> Um, and we harmonised Ariana Grande, and um, we spoke a lot about Ariana Grande. Um, and what, like, what about Ariana Grande? Um, her power. <laughs> um, we I, we talked about her a lot. We just we just like not even in a yeah, but just like in a, such a casual way, just being like, have you seen what Ariana Grande is doing today? Um, and how much we love so her music. So were you impressed with the Coachella in sync? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't seen no, it? Okay. No, no, but I, I mean, I, I haven't watched Homecoming yet, so I feel like I have to watch that first. Oh my and gosh. Then, yeah, I started watching Homecoming and I was like, I can't handle this. <laughs> it's too much greatness. Yeah, I it's need, so yeah. inspiring and also makes me feel so bad about, <laughs> about my life. Um, Do you think but, Fran has watched Homecoming? That's such a good question. <laughs> um, not, but. No, maybe I'm just taking it really seriously. <laughs> What would um, think of Homecoming? I think she has watched it, but I think she's just like, I, I don't even think she's kind of the kind of person who would be like, everyone has to watch it. I think she's like, I've watched it, I've processed it, <laughs> it's done. <laughs> like, there's no point in me getting emotionally involved in this because it will ruin my life. <laughs> so, Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you think she gets her confidence from? I don't know, I was thinking about this. I think like with lots of women, there's often like a turning point or like something that happens in your life where you're kind of like, oh, I don't have to be miserable every day. Um, I haven't had that moment yeah, yet. But like, yeah, like you're so used to being like, okay, I'm constantly suffering and I'm constantly being told um, that I'm not good enough. And then sometimes something happens that kind of just triggers you and you're just like, oh, actually, no, I don't like this anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going to take control and I'm going to take charge and I'm going to decide how I feel about things rather than having someone else kind of prescribe my feelings for me. So I, I imagine that something like that happened maybe like more early on than the average person uh -huh. for Fran. Um, I can imagine like her being a teenager and like a teacher saying something and her being like, hmm, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then from that point, just being like, I'm going to live my life however I want it to be. Uh -huh. um, Have you had a moment like that? Um, maybe not to her degree, but... but yeah, I'd, maybe not to her degree, but I think I've definitely had like lots of little moments like that where you, you just suddenly like take a step back and you're like, hang on a second, I'm not very happy in this situation. And actually, I could be happy yes. if I wanted to be. Um, and yeah, you just kind of ha have light bulb moments where you're like, oh, actually, you know, I can, I can take control and I'm an adult, so I get to decide how I feel about things. Well, there's a moment early on in, in the season where Adie is, uh, uh, Annie's character is talking about, um, you know, she's, figured out, she's learned that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you guys are having this talk in the yeah, park. Yeah. And you're kind of like, why weren't you using a condom? Yeah, yeah. And she starts talking about, you know, I never thought having a relationship, having a kid was mm. in my cards. Yeah, yeah. That I had to do, ev like, and I, that's why I don't know what to do in this situation, because mm. will I ever have this opportunity again? Yeah, yeah. 
And Fran, like, tells her, you have to be better to yourself. Yeah, yeah. It was such a, like, uh, emotional moment. Mm. But it's, and and I think it speaks beyond the whole idea of, of this being a show about fat people or whatever. Yeah, totally. Because yeah. that's something all women... It's completely relatable, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And even these, men as well. Yeah, like, these yeah. feelings of insecurity. Yeah, yeah. And the way that you talk to yourself and mm -hmm. the way that, like, like how you basically should talk to yourself as if you were talking to your best friend because yeah. you would never Ali would never say that to Fran mm -hmm. she would she only just she's internalized all of this like hatred about herself mm -hmm. um so it's like yeah a reminder that you should be kind to yourself in the same way that you would be kind to other people is that something that's taken you a while like are you still learning how to I mean I'm still learning how to yeah, do yeah, that yeah I think so I think you, you kind of it's not like a smooth ride of being yeah. like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm always going to be kind to myself because you, you, you still live in the world that we live in. And it's so and much harder in yeah, this world. Yeah, exactly. And you're always going to have to, like, keep reminding yourself to do it, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it becomes easier the more you do it. Like, anything becomes easier with practice, but it, it definitely takes a while and it takes, like, a lot of um, trusting that things are going to get better if you, if mm -hmm. you do just, like, believe in yourself and are kind to yourself. Well, the show has a lot of moments that people found to be emotional mm -hmm. or or str or made them feel things because it's like the things you think about internally are mm -hmm. being said on a screen. Yeah, and yeah. You never thought someone else felt those exactly. things or whatever. Yeah. What was an emotional p point for you either in filming or reading a script? Um, I think when uh, after the pool party when Annie's like giving the speech to me oh, and, yeah. and Mel um, and she's basically just like this is who I am like it's not going to change overnight like all and, and also the bit in uh, in the book of Shrill where Lindy says like shame doesn't make people lose weight because if it worked then everyone would be Everybody skinny <laughs> yeah and it's like it's clearly not working guys like if, <laughs> if that's if that's the like method that you're adopting like you need to change your methods yeah um, and yeah it's just like that realization that like you're not going to change overnight um, people are always going to have something to say about you, like whether you're mm -hmm. any size. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, when, when basically when Annie's just saying like, this is who I am and I've just spent all of this time and all of this energy into trying to change that when I could have been doing all <laughs> manner of things. Oh yeah, but thinking about that, like yeah. it's true, like all this time that I... Yeah, 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 all the like mental energy that you've put into it is just like, could be so well utilized elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of think of all of the things that you can do in the world like why not do those things rather than focus on this thing that someone else has told you to change mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily feel like you need to change mm -hmm. well you touched on the pool episode which was mm. a standout for a lot of people yeah, like yeah. i've never seen something like this on television mm. like this is an important moment what was it like filming that episode um it was it was very emotional and also like the joy that you see in the show was very apparent like on set it just felt like like often you do like party scenes or like fun scenes that seem like they're like a lot of fun and actually like when the cameras aren't rolling it's just a fun <laughs> like really exhausted um, and then when the cameras on they're like ah oh, yeah yeah um, but it was generally just like that atmosphere that you see it was just like that all day and like just people having fun and people like laughing when the cameras weren't rolling and um, people like feeling confident and meeting new people and talking to people and like. Um, yeah, just like a very vibrant, fun atmosphere that luckily they captured like perfectly. I was just like, I don't know how much you could pay me to <laughs> be in a bathing suit uh, on camera. Like, yeah, I mean, I was scared as well because I've never done it before. But um, it was just like once you get into that, once you get onto that set once and you, you see, feel the energy. yeah, yeah, it, I think it would be very different if it was like me by myself, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. in a room and everyone else is fully clothed, that would be very different. But it was just like, the vibe was, everyone feels amazing today, and so we're gonna capture that on screen. And so, yeah, I felt like empowered by that. Mm. What, what do you think, I mean, a lot of people, it'd be great, like, as much as Annie is great, and we love Annie, and it's fabulous what Aidy's doing with this character. Mm. So many of us also want a companion piece where we get the Fran point of view. <laughs> yeah. What do you think that would look like? Um, if, if it's a standalone episode mm. or if we eventually ever get a spinoff, like yeah. what do you think <laughs> life looks like in her world um, through her eyes? I think I think it'd be interesting to see like what you're saying about like um, where did she get her confidence from and like where 
like how has she become this person? How has she developed into being this person who has so much self-belief? Um, and also like to see whether like Ali's right, like does she treat women badly? Like is that just who she is or is she gonna like take that advice on board and change her ways? Mm -hmm. um, and is she gonna like, because I think she's like not that vulnerable even though she's very open and honest. Mm -hmm. You don't really see much vulnerability to her. So it's like, are we gonna see some sides to her where actually she's not quite as confident as she's seen before, or is is she like just settled and grey and everything's right. perfect in her world, which it never is. <laughs> How did comedy help you with whatever insecurities you've had in life, like um, even outside of body image, anything? Yeah. Like how how did comedy help you, or how did um, it hurt? I think when I was younger. Um, I think I was, I always <laughs> knew that I was very funny. Um, <laughs> so, but, but it, rather than that being like me being really confident because of that, it was more like, why don't people fancy me? I'm so funny and this is so frustrating. I don't understand it. Rather than I just want to <laughs> picture a like nine year old <laughs> Lolly having this conversation with herself. Yeah, because. yeah. Because it wasn't, didn't help that I, that I knew that. Like <laughs> now I'm like, okay, like I've got things going for me. Like I have a sense of humor. Um, that's like a great thing to have. But at the time it was just like, why is this not working? <laughs> um, uh, so I think, I think I was, because I was just so interested in comedy from such a young age. Mm -hmm. And that was like my focus all the time. And so. Who were your inspirations? Um, Catherine Tate, uh, Olivia Coleman, Keenan and Kel. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, all that, the Nickelodeon series, all that. Uh, Amanda Bynes. Um, basically, all like young people I saw like doing sketch. Basically, uh -huh. like SNL kids mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. was basically my inspiration. Um, and then like Chris Morris and Amanda Iannucci and people like that as I got like into my teens and stuff. Wow. Mm. So what um, what what do you hope people take away from this show? Um, I think I hope that people see that it's like see like the fact that it's so good for fat representation and see that it's so good for um, challenging ideas of fat phobia and the idea that people should always change the way that they look to fit other people um, but also it's like a relatable show in so many ways to so many different people like it's about um, finding yourself and knowing who you are and being assured of your place in the world without people having to tell you um, what you should be and like women trying to navigate their place in the world when people are saying you know no, you're, everything you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is just a relatable thing for anyone in this crazy world that we just live in. What, what's the response that you're seeing? Like how how much are you seeing what people are saying on Twitter? Mm. You're on it. Yeah, yeah. What are people, I'm assuming people stop you now for it. But yeah, I yeah. I think, yeah, a lot of it has been from women being like, I never thought I'd see, you know, a person like me on screen, which mm -hmm. is obviously so um, amazing to hear. Um, and then also like even like when we did we did the TCAs in LA and Ian in the show was like I read the book and I related to so much of it so uh -huh. it was like it's very rewarding to see people who might not necessarily have seen this kind of show um, relate to things in it that are just kind of quite accessible and kind of relatable for anyone. How often are you being told Fran's brother I need him <laughs> in my life? <laughs> he's my friend I he he's my friend AK and People love him. People love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> Annie did him wrong. Well, are we well, gonna see left. that play out more? I know. I, don't but know. Like... I think I think they had a great time, <laughs> and then he was gone, and it was just like a wonderful fling. And who knows what might happen later on? <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Anything. I didn't know if you were joking with that. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, you also appeared in Miracle Workers yes. opposite Steve Buscemi yes. as God mm -hmm. and Daniel Radcliffe. Please share a little bit about this experience. Um, that was a very like amazing but also surreal experience. Um, so that was like maybe like six months before I did show. Um, and you play like this assistant type. Yeah, yeah. yeah I play God's assistant yeah. um, who's just very like frustrated in her job and thinks that she's like not being appreciated. Um, yeah, 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 very underappreciated. Um, and it was just so fun, and everyone was wonderful. <laughs> we all like, got on what great. What is it like, have, like sharing screen time with Steve? It's, I mean, he's so funny. Like, we all know this already, but like, just even like things that he would improvise and like 
like him like playing guitar and trying to play like my Sharona on guitar, um, and him like going through like his like God Tinder. <laughs> um, there's like a scene where we have to kind of like pick out guys yeah, and we're yeah, like, yeah. oh, he looks nice, and like even like that is like in the moment I was like, what's happening in my life right now? Um, but yeah, it was very very fun. I read somewhere that you guys all went to see the room together. I actually wasn't there for that. <gasps> yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't arrived yet. Um, Whoa. They saw the room there. Have you seen the room <laughs> on your own before? I've never seen the room. But I did, I did go to see the disaster artist with Geraldine <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, when we were there. Um, I think they were planning on like trying to, trying to do both. But yeah, the disaster artist is amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, now I feel like I've seen the room. <laughs> no, you haven't. I have to. You have to go. <laughs> Midnight showing, take mm -hmm. spoons. Yeah, I've been spoons. Experience. Yeah, I've heard about Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so season two, they've opened up the writer's room. Mm. Do you get to say anything? Like, can you at least tell them we need more than six episodes? Yes, yeah, there are more than six episodes. Okay, they are. Yeah, there's eight episodes. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's definitely like, like AD like, will we'll suggest things and we'll have like input and... Um, suggest like different arcs for characters to go down and stuff. So it's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to see from Fran? Um, more jumpsuits. <laughs> um, uh, interesting new hairstyle. I don't know what what direction she's going to go in for her hair. Um, and also just yeah to see whether um, her and uh, Mel like stay together mm -hmm. or like if she does just start to play, play the field again and like kind of goes back to her old ways. Um, I love that you love jumpsuits so much. Because I it's love so comfort. hard in the bathroom, though. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a. It's like it's the price you have to pay. It's a commitment. It really is. Yeah. And you're committed. You just. I don't... think the comfort that you get, and the practicality of having as many as eight pockets, <laughs> <laughs> is worth it. It's worth it. Getting stuck in it <laughs> in the bathroom. There was one other thing I wanted to ask you, which is in the show, Annie has a troll mm -hmm. who just is on top of her all the time with any article she writes. Mm. In comedy, have you experienced that? And how have you dealt with that? Um, I've Can had trolls, yeah, running? sometimes. Yeah, and I used to use block and then I was like, no, they don't, I don't want them to know that I yeah. care. <laughs> so then I, I've started meeting a lot of people. Um, yeah, I've had lots of, I've had trolls, um, often because, just not necessarily from doing comedy, but just from like me speaking out about something that I think is important. And then I get trolls, um, but, I, th I find them like quite easy to ignore most of the time because mm. what they're saying is so ludicrous that I'm kind of like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> like if, if they said something like really like cutting and personal, uh -huh. I'd be like, oh no, they're yeah, right. that's why it's hard. It's, yeah. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it could be anything. But when it's like just kind of like the generic, it's like stupid. racist, sexist bar, it's kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> no, because you're wrong. Generic. So, yeah. Very generic. Um, we're going to end things with a lightning round. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you a series of questions. You can direct your responses over here. Okay. Ready? Yes. What performer of today totally blows you away and it can't be on your show? Um, Tim Robinson. Last show you binge watched? Tim Robinson, I think you should leave. <laughs> Who is going to win Game of Thrones? I've never seen Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is for nerds. <laughs> what classic TV show would you have loved to be on? Keenan and Kel. What's the worst job you've ever had and it doesn't have to be acting? Um, I used to have a very, very boring office job where it's so boring. <laughs> Even to explain, it's boring. It was called International Operations Coordinator, which sounds actually quite cool and it wasn't. It was just like like shipping books to different countries and like organizing like courses for teachers to teach and it was just like a lot of like DHL and invoices and like spreadsheets and PDFs and it was bad it was very bad <laughs> I now want that to be part of Fran's backstory yeah, yeah. Like her turning point. series two is her doing that <laughs> yeah well Lolly thanks so much for joining us it was a pleasure having you thank here. you so much yes. And thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to see more of our Emmy chats, head over to ellytimes.com.